Okay, so I'm just going to kind of recap real quick what we did on Friday. So the first thing we're looking at when we're factoring is if there is a greatest common factor, that is both numerically and algebraically, because sometimes it's just a number, sometimes it's a variable, and sometimes it's a variable with a power. Remember when we factor out a variable with a power, that technically that rule when we're dividing, we're actually, we're gonna subtract the power. Is everybody okay there? Okay, so that was like this part. Then we got down into here, which was our actual factoring. We do need to look for GCF first. If your variable out here, and I'm gonna use X on all of them, if it is X squared, if it has a one, its coefficient is one, then you should be okay to go ahead and split that. The only time that is not true is if they gave you like an X to the third and X squared and X, which means you factor an X out, which we don't have yet, but we will later. So just when we go after we get past quadratics. So for now, you should be starting with an X squared for the most part or whatever letter they give you. If it is a one, we can split. So to decide what my signs are inside my two factors, how do I decide? Where am I looking? The C. I'm looking at the sign of C. If C is positive, what does that tell me? They're going to be the same. They're going to be the same. If C is negative, they are going to be opposite. Different signs, okay? One of each. Okay. If C is positive and I decide they're the same sign, then I go look where? I'm looking at the sign of a B. And if B is positive, then they are both what? Positive. Positive. If B is negative, then they are both negative okay if they are opposite signs okay then I know I have one of each in here and my bigger sign or my bigger number gets the sign of B and when they're opposite signs I'm subtracting my two numbers at the back if they're same sign I'm adding my two numbers at the back everybody okay there yes any questions we're good okay so we had about six of those. Then we got down here where I did have a coefficient in front of my A value, or my A value was a, something besides one. And first thing I'm looking to see is can I factor that A value out? If I can, that's what I do. Remember in my factors that A value must still be out there. Are we okay there? Then I follow my same procedure for splitting. Everybody good so far? Okay, a good way to check, remember I told you, is you can check x times x would give you x squared times 2 gives you 2x squared, which is what you started with. And 10 times 2 is 20 times 2 gives you 40, which is what you started with. The only thing you have to be careful with is your signs. Everybody good? Okay there? All right, also you can graph them and check, but I did tell you, and I, I'm going to tell you, and I told my third period also, sometime and in, in, probably this week, I'm going to give you four quadratics like you're going to write I'm on you're going to write them on notebook paper and you're going to factor them without a calculator like you're going to have to do it by hand. I'm not going to give you the huge giant numbers, but guys, we should be able to add, subtract, multiply and divide without like the numbers being super crazy. Okay? Like like we should be able to handle that because I what I don't want you to do because some of you know or remember how to just go get your factors from the graph and that is not what I want you to do. I need you to be able to factor because the problem is is later on we're going to get to problems that you can't just go graph it and find those factors out that way and I need to make sure that you can do this by hand or you're not going to be able to do some of those things that we get to and then it's going to be a nightmare for you and me. So that is coming and I probably will do it this week before we leave for the break. Okay? All right. So that was those. Then we got down here to these problems where I had an A value, but I could not divide it out. Now, I'm still looking to see, can I pull, pull something out, but I can't in this case. So when we can't do that, that's when we use that slip and slide. So we multiply A times C, which allows me to have a one A value, and then my C value changed because I multiplied it together and I got a new C. Everybody okay there? Then we split like normal. Then we can't stop there. If I multiplied A to C, then I have to divide A back out for both of those. Everybody okay there? I divide it out. If it divides evenly, that's great. That's what happened here. It divided out, I got six, so I had X minus six. 
Here it doesn't divide out. I still have a fraction. So that means the denominator pushes up. It slides back. That's where the slip and slide comes from. It slides back to the front. Are we okay there? Everybody okay? All right, so now we're back here. And we worked two more of those. So we are gonna pick up where we left off right here on number 17. All right, so first thing I'm looking for is I, yeah, I'm looking to see, can I take six out? The answer is no, I can't take six out. So I'm gonna do, Aaliyah, what'd you say? Yeah, I'm gonna multiply my six over there. So that gives me six times 21 gives you what? 126. 126, okay, so I've got x squared minus 5x minus 126. Now I can split. All right, so x is going to, x squared is going to split to be x and x. My signs are going to be what here, Grace? Same or different? Different. Different, okay. All right, so now I'm looking for my combinations of 126. This one is a bigger one, so we're going to have to go into the calculator. All right, I know if I divide by 2, that's going to give me 63. That's not going to do it. In the middle, am I adding or subtracting my two numbers? I'm gonna subtract my two factors. Everybody okay that I'm subtracting there because my signs are different. All right, so like I said, uh, 63 and two isn't gonna subtract and give me five. Has somebody found it yet? If I divide by three, that's gonna be 42. That's not gonna do it. Four, does four go in there? Mm -hmm. No, okay. Six and twenty-one. That difference isn't five. Fourteen and nine. Fourteen and nine. There it is. All right. So fourteen and nine are my numbers. Which one's positive and which one's negative? Fourteen. Okay. Why is fourteen negative? Yep. Because this is it. Because when I subtract, I need a negative, which means this has to be my my negative has to be the bigger ones. Everybody okay there? All right, so I got that. Is that my, are those my factors though? No. Okay, what do I do now? Okay, take my six out here. All right, so both of, neither of these are gonna divide out evenly. This fraction is gonna become what? Wait, nine over six is gonna become what? Three over two. All right, 14 over six is gonna simplify and become what? Seven over three. Okay, so now, what slides to the front? The denominator. The denominator. So two slides to the front and three slides to the front. So my first factor is going to be written how, Jessa? Um, two x plus nine. Not nine. Three. 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 Remember, I have a whole three. new fraction there, so be real careful with that. Two x plus three. All right, and my other one, Aaliyah, is going to look like what? Okay, 3x or 3y minus 7, whichever variable you were using. Everybody okay there? Mm -hmm. Any questions on that one? No, we okay? All right, 18. Okay, my a value is not 1, right? So the first thing I'm looking is can 16 come out of all three of those things? That's the first question. Okay, 16 doesn't come out of all of them, but is there something that I can take out of all of them to make my numbers smaller? Because we have to do that first. So we tried 16, it didn't work. Does eight work? No, what's the next vector down in 16? Four, does four work? Will four come out of all three of those? No, it doesn't come out of 54. Okay, so then I'm going down to what? Two. Two, that's all that's left. And we know for sure two comes out because they're all even. So two is all I can take out, but I have to take it out. Okay, I can't leave it. All right, so I take that two out. That leaves me with 8x squared plus 30x minus 27? Yes, sir. Okay, 27. All right, so... Now, I still don't have a 1 there, but I know I can't simplify it any further. So now what do I have to do? Yeah, now I've got, now I've got a slip and slide. Are we okay? This 2 has to stay. Bring it down. All right, so now I've got x squared plus 30x. What's 27 and 8? 216. 216? Okay. 
minus 216. All right, now I can split this. X and X, my signs are going to be what? Same or different? Yeah, different. Different because 216 is negative. All right, so different signs. All right, so I'm going to start working my calculator here. Uh, 2 and 108 is not yet. Um, 3 and 72, also not yet. Does 4 go into that? Mm -hmm. It's um, 4 and 54. 4 and 54, that's not going to be it. I'm going to be subtracting in the middle, so 54 minus 4 doesn't do it. it uh, huh? 6 and 6. 6 and what? 36 and 6. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. All right, so which one's which? 36 is Okay, 36 and 6. Okay, are those my factors? What do I do now? I take an 8 out of both of those. So that cancels and gives me 36 over 8. 4 goes into both of those. 9 over 2. And 6 over 8 becomes 3 over 4. All right. So when I write my factors, do not forget your 2. It has to stay. All right. So I have 2. What is this first factor going to be? X plus. 2x plus um, 9. 2x plus 9. And what is my second one going to be? 4x plus 4 minus 3. 4x minus 3. Okay. I'm going to um, go to the board and show you something right here. I'm going to have to turn this for a second. All right. I want to show you this about the 2. Now, 1, if we multiply that back in, 4x times 2x gives me 8 times 2 gets me back to 16. 9 times 3 gets me 27 times 2 gets me back to 54. Everybody okay there? All right, so I want to show you something with this two. So let's say that I didn't take that out, and I'm going to need y'all to work the calculator for me because I don't have it. I, don't, I didn't bring one up here. I had 16x squared plus, what is that, 60 in the middle? X minus with the back, right? 54. Okay, so if I hadn't taken that two out there, multiply these for me real quick, please. What is it? 864. Minus 864. All right. Now I've got this huge thing to factor, right? Mm -hmm. So those numbers are really big, and I don't know what these factors are. I mean, I can already tell you I don't know what they are. I just know this much right here. All right, so divide by 16. What does that get you? 54. 54 and 16. That's not going to work. Um, divide by 8, maybe? 48. 8 and 48? It's 18 and 18. 18 and 8. Wait, wait, 18 and 48? That, that, that's not going to work. I'm trying to find these two here. Um, and I, like I said, I, I really don't know what they are. There's 72 and 12. There it is, 72 and 12. Okay, so 72 here and 12 here, right? Okay, and then we would have to take the 16 back out, right? Okay, so simplify this fraction for me. This one's going to be what? 9 over 2. Okay, so that gets me 2x plus 9. Did I simplify that one right? 4, 3 fourths. And 3x minus 4. Okay, so the, did I do that? Yeah, 3x minus 4. So we didn't come out right. You see that we didn't come out right? Okay. So that's, that's why, like, we've got to take that 2 out because we're not going to get back to it. Because, see, this only gets me, oh, that's 4x minus 3. My fault. Okay. So we didn't come out right. And so, the pro, so when we do this, what's going to happen is we're still missing that 2. Does that make sense? So that, like, we've got to make sure we pull that out right or we're not, our factors aren't going to end up coming out exactly right. Is everybody okay there? Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that, like, we that that we've got to pull that out first that's why it says like your first step is always to pull out the greatest common factor because we want to make sure that we're capturing that too technically that too what it's going to do is it's going to cause a stretch out it's going to make that stretch even more is really all it's doing so the factors on the inside came out okay but we lost that two out there does that make sense to y'all yes okay all right so the next one, all right, um, do I have a common factor I can take out? No. 
okay? All right, so I'm gonna have to multiply that in, which is gonna get me x squared minus 12x plus 36, okay? And so what do we got here? What are my two numbers? Six. Six, yeah, they're both six. All right, so then I need to do what? Or nine. Yeah, pull out that nine, which these are both going to simplify to two over, two over three, which means when I write that factor, it's going to look like three x minus two times three x minus two, right? Mm -hmm. Which would typically be written like this. If you write it this way, three x minus two and three x minus two, that is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Typically, like if you saw it on a test or something like that, they're going to write it, most of the time they're going to write it this way because it's the same parentheses. Are we okay with that one? Okay. Um, essentially, this is a perfect square trinomial. So, uh, this one right here, what am I hoping is going to happen? Yeah, I'm hoping eight's going to come out. Does it? Yes. It does. Okay, so if I take it out, that leaves me with x squared plus 7x plus 12. All right, so when I split that, my signs are going to be both positive. So what do I have there? 3 and 4. Yeah, 3 and 4. And um, I already pulled the 8 out, so there's really not anything else left to do there. Are we okay with that? All good? Questions are all right there. All right, that was pretty easy. All right, this next section is difference of squares. We also did this in algebra one. So here's the key. One, it has to have a difference. What does difference mean? It means subtract. So I've got to have a subtraction in the middle and if it's a different, it's always a difference of two things. Subtraction is not like addition where I can have four of them. I can only have two, right? The first thing minus the second thing. So I've got to have two things with subtraction in the middle. And those two things must both be perfect squares. Okay? So if you think about it, what happens is, is, is I had two factors, two binomials that were multiplied together and the middle canceled. So what, what do we have to have for the middle to cancel there? What makes two numbers cancel? They're opposite what? Signs, right? Like so positive 5 and, po and negative 5 gives me 0, right? Positive 3 and negative 3 gives me 0. So if we know that, then what that means about those factors when I split this is I know one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. And essentially, when we split this, what we're doing all the way through here, when we split that x squared, we're basically saying x splits to be x and x squared, x squared is x, right? Okay, so we're kind of always doing that with x, but now because it's a difference of squares, I need this to be a perfect square. What's the square root of 4? 2. 2. So both of these are 2. And if I try to foil that back together, my positive 2x and my negative 2x are going to cancel and give me 0 in the middle. And then 2 times negative 2 gets me the negative 4. Is everybody okay there? Of why that works? Okay. So here's, here's what sometimes happens. Is y'all forget that it has to be a difference and there's an addition in there. Guys, you can't factor that. If this was x squared plus 4, it cannot be factored. Like, it, it's, it can't be done. Okay? So not... But not at this moment. Uh, let me kind of rephrase that. It can't be done with what you know right now. But what you're going to learn in the next, like when we come back from the break, it'll be able to be factored. You just can't do it right now. All right, so this one, do I have a difference of squares? Yes or no? Yes. yes. All right, so I'm going to still use x. The signs are always going to be opposites. The square root of 81 is? So x plus 9, x minus 9. Are we okay there? All right, this one. Since I have numbers out front in front of my variables, I do want to check and see, is there something that I could take out of both of these on number 23? Yes. 
what would that be? No, sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry, am I missing something? Like, I can. Like, one's X and one's Y. So, in this case, like, I got to use the letters that they gave me. All right. So, subtraction in the middle. Yes. Both perfect squares. If it's an even exponent, it's a perfect square. All even exponents are perfect squares. We okay there? All right. So, I know I have this. I know one of them's positive and I know one of them's negative. What is the square root of 9x squared? 3x, okay. What is the square root of 25y to the 4? 5y squared because I'm splitting it. So you have to remember with powers, they don't work like no, the numbers, we've got to take the square root, right? The powers, we got to cut them in half when we're taking the square root, okay? So don't get those mixed up, all right? Okay, here, do I have a difference? Are they both perfect squares? Yes, all right, so I can go ahead and go here. One's positive, one's negative. Square root of this is gonna look like what? Yeah, M and N, and they both have a power of one. So both of these are M and N. Because M times M would give me M squared. N times N would give me N squared. Square root of 49 is? 7. seven. So now it is factored. Are we okay there? Questions? We're good? Okay. All right, this one. Do I have a difference? Yeah. Are they both perfect squares? Yeah. No. no. Okay. So I have numbers in front of both of them. What do they have that I can take out? A two, so I'm gonna take out my two, which leaves me with what right here? 36. 36 R to the six minus S squared. Are we okay there? Now do I have perfect squares? Now I do, all right? So my two must stay. All right, square root of this is gonna be what? Six, and when I split R, it's gonna be R to the third. Okay, so this one's gonna be six, R to the third, and these are gonna be S back here. Are we okay with that? Yes? Yes? No, yes, okay. All right, this one, do I have, I have subtraction in the middle. As soon as I see two terms with a subtraction in the middle, your first thought has to be, it's probably gonna be a difference of squares. Now, is it a difference of squares the way it looks right now? It absolutely is not. Okay, so now if it's not, what if I don't have perfect squares to start, then I'm looking to see, can I take something out of it? Okay, and really in all honesty, you should be looking to take something out, out of it first. Otherwise, sometimes we miss something. So, because remember, when we have the very front of our factoring page, the first thing it says is always look for a GCF first. That should be your first thing. All right, so what can I take out of these things? Two. Two. Anything else? B or two a. a squared B. A squared B. All right, so two A squared B divided by two A squared B leaves me with what? You gotta leave me with something. Zero. Uh uh, you can't divide, never get zero. You started with zero. It's going to be one. Okay. Minus. What about what is this going to give me? Sixteen a squared. Sixteen a squared. Now do I have a difference of squares? Yes or no? Yes, I do. Okay. So two a squared b still has to be there. I can't drop it off. So here are my two parentheses. One's positive. One's negative. Square root of one is. One square to this is going to be four a and four a. All right, y'all with me there? Okay, I'm going back to my board again for just a second. All right, so let's pretend that this I'd already factored out the two a. I'm going over here to the sixteen. All right, so let's say that I have this right here. I have.